All right, in a, this screencast, we're going to learn some make file magic. So in the previous screencast, you learned how to construct a basic make file that would let us compile our project. We put a little clean target in there, and this figures out what files we've modified and it will conditionally compile our code and it only rebuilds the components necessary. It doesn't have to, doesn't rebuild everything from scratch. The problem with this make file is it's not going to scale. I mean, it could, it'd be very cumbersome. Think about if we have thousands of source files, millions of lines of code. First problem is, is I've got to list all of my .o files here and here. That list could be extremely long. And I'm going to have to have an entry for every .o file that I need to compile. That list is going to be very long, even though it kind of looks the same. And maybe a little more problematic is that I've got to figure out what all these dependencies are. And they could be quite complex. So we're going to look at some things that will help deal with these issues and we're going to make a make file that will be very generic and will work for just about any C++ program. So the first great discovery is that the compiler can actually generate dependency information for you. And so if you use the dash mm switch here on the command line and then list your sources numbers.cc, main.cc, you see that the compiler will actually generate this dependency information for you. And this is exactly the dependency information that we included in our basic make file. So now we just have to figure out how do we produce this information, how do we incorporate it into our make file so that it make will take advantage of that information. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to add a new target called depend. So anytime that I want to generate or update my dependency information, I'm just going to type make depend. And the way I'm going to update my dependency information is by typing all this stuff. Now, how do I get it into my make file? I'm going to have to initially start by putting it into a second file called makefile.dep for depend. And once the dependency information is in that file, then I can use the include command to include that information. Now that I have the dependency information coming in through this file, I can get rid of it from here and from here. Notice the dependency information didn't have the dependency for the executable, it only had the dependency information for the source files or the .o files. So let's, let's try this out. So make clean. Oh, oh, so now it's telling me that no file exists. So I can either create the file by touching it, or I can have my make file created automatically. So here is clearly something I need, makefile.dep. Well, how do I get a makefile.dep? I simply execute the command touch makefile.dep. And that will create, if this file doesn't exist, it will create an empty file. Then when I actually execute make depend, then the file will contain my dependency information. So let's try this again. Make clean. Notice that it touched makefile.dep, then it removed the executable and the .o files. If I look at makefile.dep, you see that there's nothing in there. Now if I say make depend, it executes the command, and now makefile.dep contains my dependency information. Now I can type make, and it will build my project. So let's just go back through that. I added a new target called depend. It stores the dependency information in makefile.dep, which I can include here. 
using the include command. But so that the user doesn't have to create the makefile.dep file his or herself, I can add a target that will do that for them. So I've solved one problem. I don't have to try to figure out this complex dependency information, but I still have these long lists of file names. So let's let's take a step in, in the right direction here. So first of all, I, I've got a list here, I've got a list here, I've got another list down here. One thing I can do is I can maintain one list instead of multiple lists. And I can create a list of source files by typing the following. So here's a list of sources that I've created. And the name of the list is sources. And now anytime that I add a file, I can just add it to that list of sources. So how do I use the list of sources below? Well, here's a list where I need a list of sources. And I can use a macro to give me the value of that list variable by simply typing dollar sign parentheses sources. So when make sees this, it will evaluate this to the value of that variable. So now if I try to make depend, notice that it correctly substituted the list of sources. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this list of sources and create a list of object files. And I can do that with a little bit more make file magic. And I'm going to use the macro. This time I'm using the curly. And I want to take my sources list. And everywhere I see a .cc, I want to rewrite that as a .o. And so this macro will take the list of sources and everywhere it sees a .cc, it will convert it to a .o. So now I have a list of object files. And I can replace my list of object files by using here and here. And let's see how that works. Great. Now I'm still maintaining this long, a potentially long list of source files. We'll, we'll go back in and we'll fix that a little bit later. Uh, but let's look at some other uh, things that we can do to make this easy to modify. I'm still in a situation here where I've got to have an entry for every .o file that I need to compile. So let, let's fix that one. Notice that the compile command for all my .o files will be the same. Linking is different. The compiling of the .o files is all the same. So one thing we can do is replace main.o with my list of objects. When make sees this, it will execute this command for every .o file in this list. So effectively what I'm getting here is a for loop. Make will loop through all the .o files in this list. And what do I want to do? Well, I want to compile the corresponding .cc file. So I need some macro to give me the name of the file. And the macro that does that is dollar sign star. So for main.o, this will be main, and then I'm adding a .cc. For numbers.o, this will be numbers, and I'm adding a .cc. Now I can get rid of this line. And in fact, this will compile all of my .cc files to their respective .o files. So let's try that. There we go. So I can just, now all I have to do is just add a new file name here, and it will be converted to a .o file, and then that .o file will um, get compiled here. Okay. Another thing we can do, let's say that we're using different compilers. 
Uh, here we're using G++, but maybe I want to use the Intel compiler, the Microsoft compiler, some other compiler. And I can create a variable for my compiler name. This also makes it uh, easy to convert it to a C compiler or any kind of a command line compiler. Fortran, Pascal, see how that works, still works. I also want to add compiling flags. So we'll have a variable called C flag, some common ones are or dash G for generating symbolic debugging information, uh, write all warnings, and then there's often an optimization switch that we use. So let's, let's look at our generating debugging information and looking at all warnings. So everywhere we compile, we want to use those switches. And we don't want to include the dash C switch because we don't use it here when we link and we don't need any flags when we generate our dependencies. This is the only flag we need. So now let's look what happens here. So now notice that we're using our compiling switches when we actually build our executable. So that's pretty good. The, the only problem now, and so this would be a, a fine make file, and now I'm going to show you how you can avoid maintaining a list of sources, and, and, and this is where we get into a bit of a trade-off. So the disadvantage of this make file is I have to maintain this list of sources. But the advantage of this make file is that I can have other .cc files that are not part of my project in my directory. And so if you've got you know, little snippets of code that you're testing, those can be in your directory and they won't get um, included into the build of your project. We're going to look at another make file that will, will have some advantages and disadvantages. But what I can do here is I can replace this and I can have make actually generate this list of sources for me by using a macro and the command wildcard and star.cc. And what this will do is this wildcard command will generate a list of the .cc files in the current directory and that becomes the list of sources. So let's try that out. Again, it works. Now, so the advantage of this make file is that I don't have to maintain a list of sources. And in fact, you can take this make file and drop it into any directory with .cc files and it will build it. The disadvantage of this make file is that if there are .cc files in that directory that are for test code or anything like that, then that's going to be included in the build. And of course, if you have two main functions defined, then the build's going to fail because you can only have one main function. The final thing I'm going to talk about is how do we use this make file for something where our extension is not .cc? Well, that's simple. So some, some people may uh, port their code from a Windows machine, and maybe we have, instead of main.cc, main.cpp. We have a numbers.cpp. That's pretty simple. All we have to do is just global search and replace and change.cc for .cpp. Everything works. And of course, if we want to change it back, then all we have to do is change.cpp to .cc. Oh, 
Uh oh. What did I do wrong? Ah, I must have uh, left something off. Let's see what I did. Oh, I deleted it. Oh my gosh. What did I do wrong? Oh no. That's what I did wrong. Well, let's see if we can fix this. That should be main.cc. And I can bring in a copy. There we go. Make sure you have backups, kids. So that's it. Let's uh, take one final look. Here's our make file. We've got variables for things. We've got our target for linking. Oh, and, and by the way, you can still um, compile individual targets. And there's your general make file.